Hi everyone. Um, this video we're just going to run through a review of depreciation for further mathematics. So in this presentation we'll be covering um, applications of geometric and linear recursion, so looking at flat rate, unit cost and reducing balance depreciation, both in recurrence relation form and general form. So just a quick reminder, um, depreciation we're talking about the reduction in the value of an asset. Um, this is usually measured over time, but sometimes in the case of unit cost in units, we're also always talking about a reduction. So first up, um, we're looking at unit cost depreciation. So here we're talking about depreciation of an asset in relation to the units of use. And so looking at our um, recurrence rules there, we've got always have an initial value and then we're looking at a recurrence relation in that form of the next value is given by the current minus that depreciation amount. Generally speaking that depreciation amount D is the cost per unit um, but we'll look at some different types of examples that we tend to see in the exams. So this first example is um, a modified question from exam one last year. So we're looking at a machine that was purchased for $30,000 and it produces 24,000 items a year. If the value of the machine is depreciated using the unit cost method, um, and after one year, the value of the machine is $26,160. So the first things we wanna do is be um, identifying what are those key values in the um, question. So we're given our initial value. We're told some information, how many units per year and then we're told after one year the value of the machine. And so now we're going to use that information to find the cost per unit or the value of D. And so first up we want to take, I guess, we want to work out well what has been that depreciation amount over the year. Um, and so to find that, that value change, we're looking at doing 30,000 minus uh, 24, oh, sorry, 24, uh, 30,000 minus the $26,160 to get the value change over the course of one year. So that gives us $3,840. And remember that is the value in the whole year, but it's produced 24,000 items. So we need to divide that value, that change by 24,000 to get our unit cost. And so that gives us um, a unit cost of 0 0.16 or um, 16 cents. So our value of D, 0 0.16. So now in part B, we can write down a recurrence relation in terms of V0, Vn plus 1 and Vn that can be used to model this. In a, and it's important to pick up here, they want the machine in, in units produced. So using this unit cost that you found in part A. Remember, we always have to state our initial value. So V0 started at $30,000. Vn plus 1 equals our current value. So Vn minus our unit cost, 0 0.16. Taking this a little bit further, um, if we now look at an example where we are asked to take um, a general rule to solve. So often you have a choice where you can just continue to apply the recurrence relation, but it is sometimes an advantage to switch to using a general rule. And so how we sort of work that out is making a decision about um, whether we have to go more than maybe five or 10 um, iterations of the rule. If we do, it's going to be quicker and more effective and um, have less room for error if we switch to this general rule style. So just a reminder, you are taking your initial value and your value of D and they are being placed into this general rule form. So we still have, want to be able to identify those things. So again, this is another exam, modified exam one question. This is from the 2017 exam. So our printer was purchased for $680, so there's our initial value, and the value of the printer was depreciated using unit cost. On average, 1,920 pages are printed every year at a cost of $0.07 cents or $0.07 per page. What is the value after four years? So I could 
put this into a recurrence relation and then just apply the, the rule until I reach four years. But here we're talking about a cost per page with 1,920 pages per year for four years. So it would actually take a fair bit of time to get to that answer. So it's going to be easier to put this into a general rule form. So the first thing I want to do is put my rule together. And so in general, the value of my printer is going to be the initial value, so 680 minus my depreciation amount, 0 0.07 times the number of uses. The next thing I need to work out is, well, what um, value of n am I going to substitute in? And so there's a couple of different ways of approaching this, but the, the most basic way, I guess, is we've got 1,920 pages, and that's happening um, for four years. So 1,920 per year for four years gives us a total of 7,680 pages printed over that time. And so then when we substitute in to our rule, so we're actually finding V7680, we are then just doing minus 0 0.7 times those total number of pages. And that gives us our value after that four year period of $142.40. Okay, so next up, we're looking at flat rate depreciation. So again, this is another um, example of linear, um, a linear recurrence relation where we're looking at depreciating by a constant amount each time period. Quite often though, we are given the um, information, we're told that we're depreciating it depreciating at a rate per year. So the first step is often we have to find this calculation of our depreciation amount of D. Okay, so looking at an example from the 2018 exam, uh, Richard has bought a stereo system that he wants to sell to help pay for a holiday. The stereo system was originally purchased for $8,500. So we've got our initial value there. And he'll sell it at a depreciated value. He could use flat rate depreciation method where SN is the value in dollars after N years. And we're given our recurrence relation here. So using this method of depreciation, uh, what is the value of the stereo system four years after it was purchased? So we're being asked to find S4 in this case. And so I'm gonna jump across to our calculator so that we can have a quick review of how to use our calculator to do recurrence relations. Okay, so in our calculator, remember we want to enter our initial value as our start point, so 8,500. And hit enter, and now we're going to use the answer function to help us find our recurrence relation. So using the answer, so second and minus, and we're subtracting 876, sorry, 867 each time. So hit enter, and that's after one year, two, three, and four. So that gives us our value for S4 at $5,032. And then part two, calculate the annual percentage interest rate. So in this case, they want us to find the R, little r value for this particular method. So in this question, we've been given our value of D as 867. And so we can use that little formula we have for D, where we've got D equals um, R over 100 times our initial value um, to help us solve for that value of R. So in this case, we know D is 867. We want to find out R and we know our initial value was $8,500. And so when we solve for that, we end up with our value of R being 10.2%. Looking at some examples of um, when we would convert to a general rule. So again, it's that um, judgment that you need to make about, well, am I, firstly, am I being asked to solve for N and does it, well, I feel like it's going to be a value that is um, quite a number of iterations of the rule. And so then it makes me worth um, switching to that value. So from here, Richard had um, same information as before, his sound system and our, um, gen, uh, sorry, our current relation that we have there. He needs at least $2,000 for his holiday. So after how many years can he sell his stereo system and still have enough money? So effectively, we want to know 
how many how many years or how many iterations of the rule until the value drops below 2000. So firstly we set up our general rule and again we're converting it so that we have our initial values 8500 minus our depreciation amount 867 times n. In this case because we want to know how many years we're going to solve for n. So we set up our equation as let's let it equal 2000 because that's going to be the lowest amount that we want it to be. 867n. When we solve for n in this case, we get 7.497. So if I sold after seven years, it's going to be worth more than $2,000. If I sold after eight years, it would be worth less than 2000 be worth um, 1,564. So in that case, then I want to say that I'm going to sell, the, or the latest I can sell is after seven years. Okay, final example um, is we're looking at reducing balance depreciation. So in this case, this is our example of geometric um, style. And we're looking here at the decreasing value of an asset as a percentage of its current value. So here we have our different style of recurrence relation where we have this value of R or capital R. And quite often in order to calculate that, we are again given a rate of depreciation and our first step is to find this big R. Okay, so an example from 2019, we have Phil as a builder who purchased a large set of tools and his tools are depreciating using the reducing balance method. The value of the tools after n years is modeled by the rule here. And so here we're told the initial value is $60,000 and we're given our recurrence relation there. So when it says use the recurrence relation to show, this is a style where we have to actually show all of our working. We can't just do it on our calculator. And so in that case, we have to actually state, start always by stating that initial value, even though it's given to us in the recurrence relation. V1 will be calculated by taking 0 0.9 times V0, so times the 60,000, and put our answer in there, which would be 54,000. V2 will be 0 0.9 times, again our value of V1 is 54,000 and we get our value of 48,600, so 48,600 as required by the question. Okay, and so part B, what is the annual percentage rate? of depreciation used by Phil. So in this case, we've been told that big R is 0 0.9 and what they want us to find is our value of little r. So much like the previous example, we can use um, the rule for big R. So knowing that that is one minus the annual rate over 100 and let big R equal 0 0.9. And when we solve that, we find that R is 10%. Now some of you would have been able to pick that up straight from here knowing that if we're reducing um, from and uh, using an interest rate from one going down that would be 10%. But if we were unsure if the value was um, not as easy to recognize then this would be the rule that we're using there. Now looking to um, convert recurrence relations uh, for our reducing balance into general rule, again um, we have to make a judgement and it's usually when we're trying to find a larger value of n um, or solve for n that we would do this. So it does look a little bit different um, and what we are taking though is our rate, our value of r and our initial value both into our rule there. So continuing on from before, uh, same information about Phil's tools. Um, he's now planning to replace these tools when their value first falls below $20,000. And we want to know after how many years have, must he replace those tools. So we are solving um, in this case for N. So first up, let's convert to a general rule. So our general rule, VN, will be our rate, 0 0.9 to the power of N, times our initial value of 60,000. And let's let that equal $20,000 so that we can solve for N to find out how long. 
when we do that, we get a value of N equals 10.43. In this case, we want to sell when it first falls below. So that means we would say after 11 years. Remember, you can always check what is what happens when um, N is 10, what happens when N is 11, and make a judgment based on that if you're unsure. Okay, so that takes us through the three key um, methods of depreciation. And so here is just a summary of all your rules. Make sure you have these and in a format that you understand them in your bound reference um, and a way that you can refer to them quickly and understand what to do when. And just some key pointers around when you're looking at these questions, because they won't be spelt out that it is this particular type of depreciation you're looking for. So when you're reading a question, you want to be identifying, well, what are the key things they're telling me? Yes, it's depreciating. And which of these three methods are they using to depreciate? So then you can refer back to your rules and know what to do from there. Identify your key values as you're working through. So the initial value, it will often be given to you worded in the question or spelt out as a recurrence relation. So identify that and know what it means. And then look for things like what is the rate of depreciation and how long are we working for? Once you have those things, you want to decide which rule you want to use. Is it a recurrence relation or the general rule, which will help you get your answer? And then finally, once you write down your answer, just check, have I actually answered the question? Did I actually give um, what they were after? So make sure you do that before you move on. And that's it. So make sure you take what you've got from here and put it into a format in your bound references that will help you um, be able to answer the questions as they come up. And good luck.